All right, welcome to Chapter 2, Section 3, Part 1. Um, so we're going to be talking about here, oops, sorry, this is Section 3, Part 1, so this will be a two-part series. This one is Part 1, Graphing Polynomial Equations, okay? And what we're going to be talking about mainly are x to the third and x to the fourth graphs. Okay, so when we talk about polynomial, we're going to do cubics and cortex. And the objective is to graph a polynomial function and to determine an equation for a polynomial graph. Okay, that's the, that's the section objective. So, first thing we need to talk about are what do x to the third graphs look like? Okay, so here is the general form for an x to the third graph. Y equals AX to the third plus BX squared plus CX plus D. Notice we go from 3, 2, 1, and 0. And we're going to be talking about here is when A is greater than 0. Okay? So this number right here, so this number right here is a number that is going to be a positive number. Okay? Not negative, so positive number. So for example, let's say Y equals 6X to the third plus 4X minus oops, squared minus 6x plus 2, okay? So 6 is a positive number. 6 is a positive number, okay? So in general, in general, cubic graphs are sideways s's. I call them sideways s's because they kind of look like a sideways s, okay? So when a are bigger than zeros, okay, this is what your graph will look like in general, give or take. Okay, so notice, please notice that how many x-intercepts do cubic graphs have? They can have one, they can have two, they can have three. The most intercepts that an x to the third graph can have is three. Okay, and we'll talk about sometimes they have one, sometimes they have um, two, sometimes they have uh, three. So we'll talk more about that. Now, so when a equals a positive number, okay, Let's talk about the n behaviors. When x is going to the right, so when x is getting bigger, what is your y doing? Your y is also going up. So when x is getting bigger, y is also getting bigger. Okay. When x is getting smaller, so that means going to the left, you notice your arrow is going down, so your y is also going down. Okay. So that's called n behavior. Okay. When x goes up, y goes up. When x goes down, y goes down. Okay. That's when a is a positive number. Okay, let's talk about when a is a negative number. So if you notice here, we're talking about when a is a negative number or less than zero. So we're looking at the same equation, but now we want to look at when a is a negative number. Okay, so for instance, y equals negative 3x to the third plus 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. That'd be an example that we're looking at here. Okay, so it is completely the opposite as the last one. Okay, what we're going to have here is the same thing, sideways s, but the ends are going to go in the opposite direction. So when a equals a negative number, when x gets bigger, so when x is going to the right, y is going down. If you notice, the arrow is pointing down. And the opposite is also true. true. When x is going down, so when we move into the left, what is the y doing? It is going up. So y is going up. All right, so that's what you have to remember for when a is less than zero. Okay, that's the, so these are for strictly. Oops, let me get rid of that. This is strictly for x cubed graphs. The last one was also for an x cubed graph. Okay. Now, what do x to the fourth graphs look like? So we're, well, now we're talking about x to the fourth. So the fourth power. Okay, it's almost the same thing. They just have a slightly different shape. Okay, so here is your general form, ax to the fourth plus bx to the third plus cx squared plus dx plus e. And we're looking for when a is positive again. So when a is a positive number, so this a is going to be a positive. Okay, the graphs now, instead of sideways s's, they're going to look like a w. They're going to look like a w. Now, why do they look like w's? Well, how many times can x to the fourth touch the x-axis? Two, three four. That's the most that they can have. If it has a power of four, like that one, the most x-intercepts it can have is four. Sometimes they have two, sometimes three, um, sometimes one. 
So we'll talk more about that at a later time. But the general form for when a is a greater than zero and an x, it's an x to the fourth, it's going to look like a w. It's going to be opening upward. Now, completely opposite of that, still looking at x to the fourth, but now we're looking at when a is less than zero. So when a is less than zero, that means a is a negative number. And instead of looking like a w, it's going to look like the opposite. It's going to look like an m. Okay, so it's going to look like an m. Okay, now how many times does this touch the y-axis again? Now you should notice that the most it can touch is four. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so if a is greater than zero, it's going to look like a w. It's going to open up. If a is less than zero, it's going to open down. It's going to open down and it's going to look like an m. Okay, so. Now that we know the general ideas of what x cubed and x to the fourth look like, um, now we can now we can graph them. Okay, so here's an example: f of x equals x plus one times x minus one times x minus two. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to plot your zeros. These are our factors or our zeros. Okay, remember these are the same things. So x minus two. Remember you always switch the sides. So our zero is at plus two. What about x minus one? X minus one would be at so you always switch your sign, so this one is at 1, and then x plus 1 would be at negative 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a sign analysis okay, to figure out our graph, what our graph is going to look like. I really don't like that, so I'm going to get rid of that and try that again. Okay. So we need to do a sign analysis in order to come up with our graph. And it's not difficult once you get the hang of it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to pick a number to the right of positive 2. You, want, you always want to pick zones. So on this problem, we have, we have zones. I'm going to start on the left. Here's zone 1. In between each x-intercept is another zone. So we have a zone in between negative 1 and 1. We also have a zone between 1 and 2. And we have a zone to the right of 2. So this one has four zones. We have to check four different locations. Okay. So let's start on the far left. Give me a number to the left of negative 1. And it can be any number you want. Let's just pick negative 3. Okay, we're going to pick negative 3. Now, we're going to plug negative 3 into each of these three pieces, and we're going to figure out what the sign is. Okay, so let's look at this one right here. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, so that's a negative. Negative 3 take away 1 more, that's a negative. That's negative 4. And negative 3 take away 2, that is also a negative. A negative times a negative times a negative. Now, I'm, I'm multiplying because these are being multiplied in our original problem. A negative times a negative times a negative is a, hopefully you know that, that is a negative. So on the far left is negative. Now, give me a number between negative 1 and 1. Pick the easiest one, pick 0. Okay, so plug 0 into our three pieces. 0 plus 1 is positive because that's 1. 0, sorry, sorry for being not neat, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, so it's positive, 0 take away 1 is negative, and 0 take away 2 is also negative, so what does that equal? A positive times a negative is a negative, negative times negative is a positive, so in between these two zeros is positive. Now give me a number between 1 and 2, okay, so I'm just going to pick 1.5. 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5, that's positive. 1.5 take away 1 is 0.5, so that's positive. And 1.5 take away 2 is a negative. So let's see what we have here. Positive times positive is positive. Positive times negative is a negative. So in between these two, we have a negative. And now off to the far right. So give me a number to the right of 2, anything. Let's, let's try 4. So 4 plus 1 is 5, that's positive. 4 take away 1 is 3, that's positive. 4 take away 2, that's 2, that's positive. All positives times positives equals a positive. So here is a positive. Now, that's the hard part. Now we're going to draw our graph. So remember, on the far left and right, it's, it's either an arrow up or an arrow down. So this one on the right says positive. So I'm going to draw an arrow up, put a, put a positive. And the trick between the two, between the dots, it's either going to be a hump above or a hump below. So if it's a negative, it's going to be a hump below. If it's a positive, like this one, it's going to be a hump above. 
and off to the left it's a negative, so I'm going to draw my arrow down. Okay, so there, so there's my graph. Maybe this is not so nice here. Okay, a little bit, a little bit better. Okay, let me start over on that one. I don't like how that looks. Okay, so on the far right, it was it was a positive over here. So I'm going to draw it above the x-axis. Okay, so that's example one. So let's try one more. Hopefully this makes a little more sense. Okay, so first we are going to we are going to put our zeros out. This would be at zero. So when it's just x by itself, that intercept happens to be zero because x equals zero. Okay, what about the middle one? x plus two, you would subtract two to both sides, so I get negative two. And minus one would turn into a plus one. Okay, so let's do our sign analysis. I'm just going to call it SA for sign analysis. How many zones do we have here? We have one on the far left. Okay, so here's one. In between these two is two. In between a one and zero is three. And off to the far right, we have four. So this one also has four zones that we have to check. Okay, so let's start on the far left. Give me a number to the left of negative two. Let's try negative five. It can be any number that you want. Negative five in for x is a negative. Negative five plus two is negative. And negative five take away one is negative six, so that's also a negative. Negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. So off to the far left is a negative. Give me a number between negative two and zero. That would be negative one. I plug in negative one for x, that's a negative. Negative one plus two, that's positive one. Negative one minus one more is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So in between here is positive. Okay, now give me a number between zero and one. Hopefully you can figure out that's 0.5. If I plug in 0.5 for x, that's just positive. 0.5 plus two, that's positive. 0.5, a half, take away one, that would be a negative. So here we have a positive times a negative, that will be a negative. So in between those two dots is negative. And then lastly, give me a number to the right of one. So two, three, four, five, or six, any of those? Okay, let's try, let's just try four. Anything would work. Okay, so plug in four for x, I get positive. Four plus two is six, which is positive. Four take away one is three, that's positive. All positives times positives equals a positive. Okay, so there, there is my sign analysis. Now let's draw our graph, okay? So in between the dots are humps. So this one's a positive, so it's going to go above. In between here is negative, so it's going to go below. Off to the right is positive, so I'm just going to keep my graph going up. On the far left is negative, so it goes down. And there it is. There's my sideways S okay, that we talked about in the first couple slides. All right, last one. This one just happens to be a... This one happens to be a X to the fourth because there's four X's. Okay, so let's take this, let's take this slowly. So our first zero is x plus three, so you always use the opposite. So the zero is gonna be at negative three, positive one and negative one, and then minus four would be at plus four. Okay, how many zones do we have here? Okay, so we have one on the far left, one in between these two dots, we have one here for three, then we have four, then we have five. So this one we have five zones that we have to check. Okay, so let's do this. So give me a number to the left of negative three. Let's try negative five. Negative five plus three is a negative. Negative five plus one is negative. Negative five take away one is negative. Negative five take away four. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive equals a positive. So that's positive, okay? Give me a number between negative three and negative one. That would be negative two. Negative two plus three is one, which is positive. Negative two plus one is negative. Negative two take away one is negative. Negative two take away four. One, two, three, an odd number of negatives will be a negative. Negative times negative times negative is a negative. So here we have a negative. Give me a number between negative one and one, that would be zero. So a zero plus three is three, which is positive. Zero plus one is one, which is positive. Zero take away one is negative. Zero take away four is negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So here we're going to have a positive. Give me a number between one and four. Let's just try two. Two plus three is five, which is positive. Two plus one is positive. 
2 take away 1 is still positive. 2 take away 4 is a negative. 1 negative will be a negative. And then lastly, give me a number to the right of 4. So 5, 6, 7, 8, any of those, let's just try 6. 6 plus 3 is 9, positive. 6 plus 1 is 7, positive. 6 take away 1 is 5, positive. 6 take away 4 is positive. Positives times positives equals a positive. Okay, so now let's draw our graph based on that information. Let's do the humps first. So in between these two is negative, so it would be below. Above, in between negative 1 and 1 is positive, so it would be a hump above. Back to negative. Now on the far left and the far right are both positive, so positive means going up. And there we have it. So I am not worried about how high you make your humps at this point. All I'm worried about is you can get the general shape and you know where the arrows are pointing. And also that you can do a sign analysis. Okay, so that is that. That's how we talked about cubes and we talked about quartic. Quartics are W's and M's. Cubes are sideways S's. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully this makes sense. Enjoy. Have a good night.